Okay, please uh, turn off or silence all cell phones and electronic devices, and would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and the pledge to the flag. extend the uh, our condolences to the family of Doreen Griffith and David Griffith. Um, Rose Griffith passed away uh, suddenly in Florida over a week ago and I'd just like to entertain another moment of silence for uh, Rose Griffith. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Here. Padu? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Kulasek? Here. Luhan? Present. Menuda? Yeah. Here. O'Donnell? Here. Ruskevich? Here. Sassy? Here. Sierra? Here. Staganga? Here. Sutherland? Here. Tautel? Here. Tui? Here. Bureau? Here. Brescia? Here. 21 present. Okay, we have two signed up for public participation, Anita Bauman from Florida regarding libraries and RCLS. Thank you. Good evening, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. I'm here representing Ramapo Catskill Library System. And first and foremost, we want to thank you all very much for restoring the funding to libraries. Um, it's wonderful to have your support, and we greatly appreciate it, and wanted to take the time to come and extend our appreciation verbally to all of you for doing that. As you know, libraries are open when the schools are closed, um, and the monies that the government provides to us help us greatly with offsetting costs for technology, much of which is used for job counseling and helping with employment services throughout Orange, Ulster, Duchess, and uh, Orange County. Orange, Sultan, Duchess, so I never get that right, I apologize. And I have a cold, so that's why I sound rather like Foghorn Leghorn tonight. Um, we are excited to remain vibrant among the communities in our neighborhoods and beyond and extend our relationships outside the four counties that we cover and partner with the Mid-Hudson Library System, also the Westchester Library System, and your support is what makes that possible for all of us to be there. So my remarks are very brief, and basically, thank you. Um, and I wish you all a very happy holiday season. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Annette. You too. Uh, next speaker, Sarah McKay, Orange County Film Office. Hello, and thank you very much for letting me speak here. Um, I just wanted to give a brief introduction to Orange County Film <coughs> Office under Orange County Arts Council and address a few questions that I've had within the past 24 hours from several of you. Um, the Orange County Arts Council Film Office basically provides services including helping municipalities streamlining um, the permit process and bringing in productions. In front of you, you'll find letters of support um, from individuals including Storm King Art Center, which after one film, um, a Netflix film with Aziz Ansari, they saw a 40% increase in attendance two years ago. Um, you'll also find letters of support from the town of Warwick, producers and individuals employed by the film industry. Um, we definitely are in need of support in order to continue our services and grow the economy um, through film in 2019. And you'll also find a production expense report demonstrating over $9 million spent um, in this area from one production. So if that's just one production, um, imagine how much more we can do. We are also working on building data collection um, starting in 2019. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, are there any referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Okay, I 
guess we'll go on to agenda item number one. Legislator Benton, resolution revising the proposed 2019 executive budget for Orange County pursuant to section 358 of the Orange County law and section 4.07A of the Orange County Charter. Second. Okay, um, well the plan is, is to vote on all the changes uh, that were made at the Special Ways and Means Commi Committee collectively unless any legislator would like to pull out any of these items to vote on separately. I say, for example, the libraries. That's okay. Just like to ask if the caucus has any issues with that. You can do it, Mike. I mean, even if you want to vote no on one one item, which you did in committee, we can pull that out. Or if you don't want to speak to it, we can keep it in, and you just say I'm a no vote on that one item. Okay. Well, I like to speak to. So you want to separate that one out, the libraries? Is that the only one? That's the only one right now. Okay. And there can be other changes if any legislator wants to submit any uh, suggestions. Okay, so we'll pull out the libraries and keep everything else collective if there's no objections. So how would we do that, uh, Council? We would just, the libraries is on the second page under planning. With the, which so let's the, vote on that one first. Okay, that's the 25,000 which was changed, so the total should be 115,000 if I remember correctly. Is that right? I believe? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we're on that one then? Yes. Okay, do you want to speak to that, Mike? Minority Leader Paduke, excuse me. Um, in regards to libraries, I understand how important they are to every community in Orange County. Over the years, uh, this county has funded probably close to a million dollars, I would think, over the 20 years that I've been here for, for libraries. Um, I, my concern with, with uh, giving additional money to libraries is the fact that libraries have their own taxing districts as well. So when we give additional funds from the county, we're actually double taxing the people in Orange County. Um, I did ask for some information regarding uh, the libraries themselves. I mean, I don't know how often they check to see uh, what in each municipality, if there were buildings that were built or there was big commercial buildings, if they have an increase in revenue. Uh, maybe we could have reduced ours a little bit to help you still. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to support it because I think, in my opinion, it's double taxation, and that's all I'll, I'll say about it. Okay. Yes. Um, caucus Leader Amo and then Legislator Magnus Dacus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think Mr. Uh, you know, Mr. Paduke is really making a good point, and I, I've had this discussion some time, and I certainly would support the 90,000. The question about the additional 25 I am concerned with, although I haven't made up my mind totally. But I want to make a point here, is, and it's only, I'm only one person, but I would like to think that if we were to fund this, that starting January 1st, that there would be some way that the library system would keep very specific data about how the money is spent and what kind of outcomes there are regarding those services provided. It doesn't seem to me to be sufficient to say well, you've given us internet money to support internet electronic training, and it really makes a difference to the to people in certain communities. Well, let's get a little more specific, and maybe even take some of the things that Mike, Mr. Paduke talked about. About well, are there other revenue sources that came along that we don't know about? I think that full report would be a good one for us to get in May or June, so that we have the open eyes when we're talking about the budget going forward for next year, as opposed to sitting here sort of discussing it. So. It probably will support the 25, but I, only on the condition that they really are willing to come back and give us that information. Kind of Thank you. Okay, Legislator Hernandez Dacus, then Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I agree with my uh, my caucus leader. Um, I believe that uh, we should get uh, enhanced reports. I, I'm under the impression that they already do give reports to maybe the leadership or maybe the chairman on a yearly basis, but certainly every legislator should be able to see those reports, just like every legislator should be able to see every report. And um, I know that they've come here before in the past and they've testified how uh, this service actually helps uh, the cities more than anyone else. Middletown, uh, Port Jervis, city of Newburgh, uh, they provide internet access for people that don't have internet access, for people that are trying to enhance their position in life, to enhance their career, 
trying to find jobs, trying to uh, research what opportunities are out there, producing resumes for themselves. And they've testified how they've provided, and I don't remember the exact number, but a couple of dozen jobs over the past year. And some of them may say, well, 125,000 for a dozen or two jobs. Yes, jobs for people that maybe wouldn't be able to get jobs otherwise and would be on social services. And what's the cost of that social services uh, that now we've eliminated? So sure, get us the reports, get us better reports, get us more timely reports, but let's not take it out on a service that is helping the least of us, people that don't have access to the internet. And I know I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. As a Republican, we have the motto where we don't wanna give handouts to people. We wanna provide the ability for them to enhance themselves. And this is what this is doing. For the critics that say they're their own taxing entity, I've said it before, Mr. Paduk, I'll say it again. We, Orange County, are our own taxing entity also, but we take grants from New York State all the time. The cities and towns are their own taxing entities, but we provide them money from the county to, to them to help in their budget. That's the way government works. I hope all my colleagues will support this. Thank you very much. Majority Leader Benelli, then Legislator Benton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I totally agree with the comments of both my fellow party leaders here. Um, and we've had some discussions about this. And Mr. Paduk is absolutely right. There is a overlay here, and especially when it comes to the various different ways that libraries are handled in each area of municipality. Uh, it's kind of like the Chinese menu. I think we need to have a better handle on what's happening, where the money is going, and what the outcome is from the taxpayer dollars that we're spending on these very different organizations. And for those of you that were at the Special Ways and Means Committee, I had mentioned that I had spoken to a lot of the chairman of the various different oversights committee uh, that looks at these budgets and, and stressed that I really firmly believe that starting in January, if not sooner, and I think one of them we may be starting with sooner, is to have these organizations and or departments come in and give us regular reports on where the spending is happening, especially when it comes to something like libraries, Cornell Cooperative Extension, and a lot of the other things, the Water Authority, a lot of the other things that were concerns that we had through this budget process. I think as a whole, this entire 21 legislators really sunk our heels in. I congratulate each and every one of you for the effort you put into this. And now we need to continue that work by staying on top of things, not waiting till budget time in October to take a careful look at this. We want the accountability. And just as Mr. Amos said, how are you doing in June? Let's see what's happening. Are we getting what we want for our taxpayers? So that's a recommendation. And while the current chairman have agreed to do something like that, and I think next year we'll have a better account. <coughs> so today, while I do agree with Mr. Paduk, I will support it to keep us going for another year. But then we really need to have more time. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just an interesting point of information. I'm not sure how many people actually looked at the whole ballot uh, in Orange County, but it was reported in the newspaper. But interesting point is that five, six, or seven individual municipalities had library proposals as propositions on the probably the back of the ballot. And I don't know how many hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that was, but they were all handily approved through the residents there. So obviously, people are in support of the library, so if we do it to decide in the future that, you know what, they can handle the amendments on them uh, on their own, uh, it was pretty good evidence this year that everything won handily when it was uh, the people were supporting them, their own libraries in their own towns. Yes, Legislator Menudo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with respect to my colleagues, I think they're all on point. We should not be doing double taxation. However, we do have a service uh, that is being provided. However, I, don't, I, per, I do not believe in funding services. I believe in funding outcomes. So to the end of that, I would like to see those outcomes on not only this, but other services that we're funding. And um, when it comes to libraries, they do resoundingly um, come, the voters come out to vote for them, and they're normally passed in my experience. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Just one further comment. Katie made a great point. We had a lot of discussion in regards to putting together a form for these different uh, organizations so that when they get the form and they're going to ask us for money, they know that we're going to require this, 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 and this to address it again. And I look forward to working on that form with everybody. 
Thank you. And can you, uh, yes, Michael. I hope everybody's hearing us. The takeaway I hear is, okay, this may be the last year. We want to see stuff starting for 2019 that we can have a real good discussion about. And I really hope that's what the message people are taking away. Would your preference be to get the outcomes right away or right before budget season? Our budget season. Right away. David, can you take care of that? This is under your purview with the libraries or the county exec's office. Okay. And just let's try to keep the, the let's try to keep the fit funding at 115 for a few years instead of just having it in there. The county exec cutting it, us restoring it. Just let's let's keep it at a steady figure, 115. And 115 isn't very much money. And both sides bring up a good point on this. I mean, Chester overwhelmingly, I know, voted their library system in. Montgomery, we have a free library. The village gives a little. The town gives a little. They raise a lot of money on cake sales and so on. But. Uh, you know, it is kind of double taxation, really. So, but 115 isn't a whole lot of money in an $800 million budget. So, okay, so roll call on the libraries. Oh, Jim, Jim O'Donnell, you have to go? Okay. You want to uh, I'm not leaving yet, but uh, I didn't expect to spend 20 minutes on $25,000 either. But uh, I'm glad we're uh, looking at everything so closely. So, just in the past, the libraries have given us data on uh, what they spend the money. I'm looking forward to their data this year. But now that you mentioned, I have to go in about seven, eight minutes. I'm taking uh, 12 kids from Newburgh to Ireland for a boxing exhibition. So uh, I'll give you some updates and pictures of uh, some knockouts over there. So <laughs> when you see me do the Irish goodbye, that's where I'm leaving. So excuse me for my attire today too. Thank you. Have a safe flight, Legislator O'Donnell. Thank you. And thank you for doing what you did. Okay, um, we're going to vote on the library, the twenty-five thousand right? dollars. Okay, roll call. Benelli? yes. Paduk, no. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, yes. Benton, yes. Cheney, yes. Baggione, yes. Hines, yes. Corsa, yes. Luhan, aye. Menuda, yes. O'Donnell. Riskevich? Yes. Sassy? Yes. Sierra? Aye. Steganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Tautel? Yes. Tui? Yes. Biro? Yes. Russia? Yes. 20 ayes, one no. Okay, next, um, collectively on the, the other amendments that were made at the Special Ways and Means um, discussion. Local. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Fagione? Hines? Yes. Pulisek? Yes. Luhan? Aye. Menuda? O'Donnell? Yes. Riskevich? Sassy? Yes. Sierra? No. Steganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Tautel? No. Tui? Yes. Euro? Yes. Gresham? 19 eyes, two no's. Okay, anything else to come before the session? Yes, Legislator Kulisek. Yes, I'd like to touch on the film office uh, a bit. Um, the budget for the film office came in as $47,350. In recent weeks, and actually filming at the jail, they've taken in $15,000 in location fees in other parts of the city of Newburgh and in other town, uh, townships, the location fees and the monies that are received for rental items, lodging, uh, catering, is astronomical at times. Uh, everybody has an information sheet in front of them that shows uh, it's a production expense report for one, one project, actually, that's it's, the name has remained confidential even to me. I haven't uh, known the name of the, comp of, the uh, of the project. But total expenses is over $9 million. And a lot of that, not all of that has come to Orange County, but a lot of it has. And uh, for a $47,000 fee, I think it's, it's, it behooves us to really entertain the thought of funding this, uh, the film office through the Arts Council. To, to go ahead and procure any and all that they need to do for uh, to, to promote the, the film. 
production in the county. We've just, in the past recent years, have gone to a 40% tax credit for those productions that come here, which we were at a disadvantage for many years with the 30%. And they were, if people are going to go somewhere and save 10% on a 10 or $20 million project, they're going to go there. Um, so I have talked with David Church, and in his budget, there's monies left from last year. But I need some sort of a guarantee that we're going to be able to move that money forward next year to help fund the film office. Um, okay. uh, do I need to make a motion to discuss this? No, we can discuss no? it. You're, okay. We're discussing it right now. Um, Legislator Minuta, then Ruskevich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have some tangential experience to this. Um, you know, I appreciate what uh, Legislator Kulisek has stated. I would like to see, again, outcomes. Uh, it's great that they're spending money in the area. However, when you really look at the vendors, they're coming from outside the area, Westchester, Rockland counties that are servicing these, um, these film uh, productions. So um, with respect to that, I'd like to see that tighter to Orange County. Uh, and I think if we're going to be funding it, it should be tied to our county. Thank you. Paul. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do agree with everything uh, Mr. Kulisek said. Um, we talked about it earlier today. Um, I know the film industry has and will continue to be a very important part of economic development here in Orange County, and I think that we do need to uh, support them uh, in one way or another. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion. Uh, there may be money left over in the planning budget. Um, there may be various ways we can do that, but I think we need to have uh, further discussion. Um, I think at this month's E&E &E committee meeting, uh, we're going to have um, the IDA is going to be there for their monthly update. Bill Fioravanti will be there. I'd like to have uh, Ms. McKay and uh, possibly someone from the Arts Council be there so we can have a, a larger discussion and find out exactly how we're going to how to fund this. I think most of us are in support or at least should be in support of this. So um, I will, as chairman of E&E, &E, I will make sure we have that on the agenda for uh, this month. Thank you. Joel, did you have your hand up? Yeah, go ahead. Um, on a separate topic, if I could discuss the memo we got today about the single stream recycling. Yeah, let's wait till we're done with this issue and then we can go on to that. Okay. okay. Um, who else has their hand up? Michael, sorry. Yeah, I just want to, I just want to uh, support what, what, what uh, Mr. Ruskovich Mr. Ruskovich has said. I think that's the right path to go down. And I think it, it would be it would be bad to go cold turkey and say you have no money this year and I'll figure out what you're going to do. And if there is money, I, I would I would certainly follow along and hope that we do something to help them out. But on the greater issue, and, and, and uh, we, Mr. Moon and I, I think agree more than we realize on the outcome issue, is that you know you really have to look at what we're getting. And and I haven't heard anything. Now I may have been out of the loop, but I think we as elected 21 members need to know what their goals are, what the targets are, what they're trying to accomplish, what the outcomes are, uh, you know, and so that we can measure it and decide, are we doing it? Is our goal to bring in, if our goal was to bring in $9 million and they came to us in January last year and said, I can bring in $9 million in revenue to this county if I read that report right, and they brought 9 million plus, we'd say, congratulations, you met one of your, one of your, your, your indicators. Let's move forward, we like this. If they come out and said they had 20 million, and they brought nine, we might want to rethink it. So I really hope that we, we sit down and talk to them about what it is their goal is. And I also think, I mean, I, I, I saw the paper and, and, and I really must scratch my head because I don't, I don't know anything about how this got started. But when I look at the Orange County, New York Film Office, I automatically think it's part of Orange County government. It just looks like it's a part of the government. Look at the logo. I think that shouldn't be. They're not part of our government. We're independent. So I mean, I look at it, I think we need to think about what kind of legal entity are they? What are we doing? Under what supervision do they have? So there's lots of questions that I think we have to ask. And so I, I welcome Paul's uh, efforts. Thank you. Yeah, I just have to say along that line, we have had a lot of discussion in the last two days on this subject. And you know, the IDA can fund certain things. The IDA cannot fund salaries, which was done in the past. The ABO specifically told us that. Um, Sarah's talked to Benny and Lori at the IDA. Uh, talked to, I talked to Jim Kulisek yesterday on the phone. Katie and I met with, and John Vero with uh, Amanda Dana and talked to her yesterday on, on the topic. I mean, we need to have a plan and we need to see what we can do. We're certainly supportive. I told you that, Legislator Kulisek. And we'll look at it uh, once they come to E&E &E and see what we can do legal. 
Um, it's definitely a great venture, and um, they bring in some revenue, some a lot better than others, but we'll certainly look at it. Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And quite frankly, you said a lot of what I was going to say. Um, but this, this has come upon us as to the situation um, the IDA is restricted in how their funding can be done and for what purposes, which has kind of brought this to the forefront. But I briefly told my caucus about this, and from the other legislators I've talked to, I think we are pretty uncomfortable around that this legislature really does want to see a commitment to the film industry here in Orange County to not only promote our tourism, but our economic development as well. I think we're all on the same page. As far as the goal is concerned, I think we're just having to figure out, we're all looking at different paths on how to achieve that goal. So um, I'm committed to continue to work on this. We've had numerous meetings over the last week and a half about this, uh, from not necessarily meetings, but conversations with a lot of very different people. I had the opportunity to, along with minority leader, um, the Duke, I almost said Burke, <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, we went over to the jail and we saw a film that was being done over there, and, and it was absolutely phenomenal on how they, and what they were bringing here to the county and how they were utilizing the resources here, whether it be the hotels, for that particular film, for the local restaurants, even for the local stores, having to run to a CVS or something like that. They definitely are making a contribution to our, uh, you know, our economy here, and as well as you know, our county. Uh, I, I think it's something that behooves us all to take a careful look at and make sure that we do it the right way. We have, a, we have a brand new Department of Tourism, a brand new Economic Development Department. They've only been there four months. So we're kind of in the, the timing isn't necessarily correct, but I think we're gonna get there. And I think, you know, starting January, if not sooner, we can start to work on all of this. So I appreciate Mr. Kulisek bringing this to the forefront because it's something we all need to address together. Okay, and I would invite Commissioner Church to that meeting in ED too. This is under his department, and he's very well versed on this subject, on this topic. Are you not, Dave? You're, you're looking bewildered out there. <laughs> as many topics. Uh, Legislator Lahan, and then Legislator Tui. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to echo a, a, what a lot of my colleagues said, uh, particularly Legislator Kuhl said. But there's even more than that. There's a lot of intangible things, the things that we cannot measure. Um, I know that every single one of you, I'm sure that every time you see something, a location in a movie or a show uh, that shows up, you know, a location that you're familiar with, it makes you feel proud. Well, those, that also brings tourists. That also brings people to our, to our communities. There's so many untangible benefits to making sure that Orange County is a place that people want to come and visit. People want to come and raise their families here. Um, personally, I, I feel concerned about this concept of, of taking away this money from an organization that's currently doing the work um, you have a bunch of people right now who are concerned about how are they going to fund this year. We just gave a bunch of money to the library, which I was fully in favor of, because of the fact that it, it provides a service. Well, I think that they provide an amazing service. I think that the, the amount of businesses that are benefiting from, from, uh, from uh, this, this, this work that's going on in the individual communities is fantastic, and I want to continue seeing more of that. I do not want in this year, although I agree with Legislator Minuta and others about the need for more focus on Orange County jobs, doesn't mean I want to take out this money that is, is really truly having a benefit. Um, so I want to just kind of push back a little bit and say, I'd really like to try to do it, at least for this year. And let's discuss, as we just did with the library, let's discuss next year about an outline, an outcomes, and, and focus on that. Let's do it this year. Let's, let's allow them this money for this year and, and move forward. I think that's a, a great compromise. So we're doing. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Um, being a first year legislator and uh, had a lot of uh, First time experiences and new uh, um, uh, issues of the year. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I learned right away was, you know, as our duties that we're charged with, it's oversight as the legislature. <coughs> when we, um, you know, then we got to, to the learning part, from my learning part, oh, you guys are pretty good. You guys have been around, we're experts at it. And uh, the thing is that the takeaway now is that, uh, you know, we need better oversight. Um, the way we do that is with the planning, as, you're, as everyone, as my colleagues have mentioned. Uh, and the big thing too there is the, is the metrics. You know, any plan you want to do, and then you want to see what the outcome is, and you want to have measurable metrics, and uh, 
uh, see where we're going. I think that would just take our oversight to another level from what I've seen so far this year. And uh, I look forward to, to having that oversight next year. Okay, who is next legislator? Mr. Kevich. Yeah, I just want to make a clarification. Uh, first of all, we haven't taken any uh, funding away from the film office. Um, what happened, uh, they were being funded by the IDA, and because of issues with the ABO, they can no longer um, provide that funding, at least not to that level. So, um, like I said before, I think we need to have a solid plan, a better discussion. Um, like I said, we're going to have an e and &E this month, and we can have that discussion, come up with a plan. And uh, just because we don't put this in the budget doesn't, I mean, 45000 is not going to be hard to come up with so uh, during a year so. yeah there's already 40,000 in the budget correct uh, potentially again that's another well, there question. Is right now for the Arts Council that could be allocated for this so that's got to be talked to with the county exec all right so again that's one more reason why we got to have the discussion come up with a plan move forward from there thank you thank you everybody keeps talking about outcomes I think legislator Amon was the first one to say that so I hope he hasn't hypnotized you to go over to the Independence Caucus now <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there any other discussion? Let's uh, have more younger versus close. Long time ago. Okay. Yes. Legislator Kozak. Just some some uh, results. Just the one project in Newburgh. Everybody should have these numbers in front of them. Um, there was one boot camp that was held in Newburgh that did teach some of the, the locals on um, backstage work, and some of them did, a handful of them did get jobs in some of the productions that are going on right now. Um, $280,000 in set construction in Newburgh. Umbra Studios has, uh, let me see a rental here for Umbra. Local cleaning services, $45,000. $415,986 spent on local rentals and fees. Uh, $313,700 in lodging in, in three area hotels, and one of them is in the Newburgh area in Orange County, in Orange County uh, Four Point Sheraton. Um, visual effects, New York cameras. So there's, there's definitely things that are identifiable out there that are definite benefits that have, this quantifies all of those numbers right here. And this is just one project. It uh, remains nameless right now, but it's uh, a show that's being filmed in Newburgh. It's been filming 91 days, let's see here. Uh, 20 in New York City, 71 in upstate New York, Hudson Valley here, and then some in Newburgh. Umber stages in Newburgh, uh, on location in, in Middletown, and Newburgh, so there's definitely a call for some help. They, when people come looking for places to, to and, and assistance for lodging, for uh, location uh, location fees, again, the, the, the jail, the, we, the county has received $15,000 over the course of the filming that was over there. I don't know what else I can say, but I, I would like well, I, I think you're preaching to the choir, Jim. I mean, I think the support is there, just how we funnel it legally and... And, uh, and we talked, you talked about the uh, tourism. Tourism is a new department. They have their hands full. And I don't like, I wouldn't like to see this not have funding until April or May, because between January and May is, is, is quite, a, quite a term. And if people want to come in and they're looking for assistance for locations or properties or help, manpower, housing, lodging, uh, between now and May, which I can't see tourism being up and running in May, helping the film office. They have their hands full of, I mean, it's a brand new department. Um, well, it's going to be on the agenda, right, Paul? It's on the phone. Okay. So come, so come in. Education Economic Development Meeting will be able to, to uh, discuss the funding that's available in uh, the planning department right now, which is on a line item for the, the uh, Orange County Arts Council. Mm -hmm. And then we're still a little yeah, bit- The county exec's office on board as well. They need to be in tune on this. So for full funding, we're still short another $7,350. And then that'll be available somewhere else in the, during the course of the- We'll year. look at that. Yes, we told you we would be receptive. 
Okay, motion to adjourn. Oh, sorry. In my speaking to Mr. Kulasek, we were talking no where's near about full funding for this. He mentioned to me about $10,000, and I guaranteed him about talking about 10000 So we should not be going overboard and saying, oh yeah, okay, all right, next one, 50. I know that. Well, that's what's in the budget, but it's legislator Ben. So, I mean, he's going to go to E&E, &E, and then E&E &E will decide what they want to do. So, I mean, I can't, you know, just like other requests that we didn't adopt tonight or we didn't make changes in the budget, there's other requests out there, and we're going to see how we look at the budget during the budgetary process and, and see what kind of monies are available. So, okay, a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. We voted on the changes, did we not? We changed this was a discussion after we voted on that. Yes. Yes, Joel, you had a question or? Oh, I'm sorry, the streamline, yes. We're all hit with that, yes. I got a text from my DPW superintendent a couple hours ago. Yes. With the recyclables you're talking about now, right? Recycling, yes, I know we all got a memo earlier today. Um, I would hope that the county exec would call an emergency contract on this or something for the hauling. I mean, it's irresponsible to expect these municipalities to we hit them last week with, a, uh, with, a, with the tipping fees. With the tipping fees, which I'm not sure who dropped the ball in the contract with that. But um, now to hit them with this right before the holiday, I think is unacceptable for us not to be able to accept recycling. And I would hope that the county exec would at least use emergency powers or something to handle this. I, mean, I know some of you guys come from small municipalities, but it affects them just as much as it would affect any city. We're talking about tons and tons of Proportionately, yeah. Well, Barry, we can certainly have that discussion with the county exec. Yeah, well, and definitely it will be on the agenda of physical services a week from Monday. Monday. Um, we're going to have them come in and tell us what's going on. Um, Kevin, did you want to add anything? Because you had some discussion with uh, Commissioner Denanga today. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to discuss it. I spoke to uh, Commissioner uh, Denega. He told me what happened was uh, we don't have a contract with County Waste, but they take all our single stream recyclables and they were paying us $5 a ton to accept those uh, items. Uh, County Waste just contacted us and said instead of giving us $5 a ton, they want $96 a ton from us. So you're looking at quite a swing there. Um, uh, the uh, I guess there's a one recycling facility in Beacon that charges their residents or their municipality $67 a ton. So we do anticipate if we can publicly bid this that the number would come in less than $96 a ton. However, because it's a contract, it has to be publicly bid. And that's why there's a delay. So then I spoke to, the I, I texted the county executive because he's with Moody's right now working on the uh, bond ratings, we couldn't speak. He texted me back uh, because I proposed exactly what Mr. Sierra discussed, an emergency contract. And he said, if you can talk uh, County Attorney Chapman into it, he's fine with it. So I called Langdon Chapman and he said he's not sure that this would qualify for an emergency contract. But he has the existing information that uh, was proposed, I guess, maybe 20 years ago when the county waste uh, went to single stream. I don't know what the time frame was. But he had those documents in his hand and he was going to review the law with uh, some members of his law staff and see if it can be legal to make an emergency contract so that we don't have to stop accepting it. However, there still will be significant fees to our municipalities, which is a terrible hit since most of them have finished their budget uh, already just as, as we're in the process of doing now. So it's, it's going to be a problem even if we get an emergency contract. There still will be a hit to all your municipalities. Yes, Mr. Minuda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is one more item of the waste uh, stream aspects that is absolutely unacceptable for these last minute items. Um, this is simply dropping the ball. The fact that we're being strong armed in the waste management industry right now, we only had one contract, one, one response to the RFP, that's a problem. Now we're being hit after that response to RFP and they get awarded. Now we're being hit with this on the other side. Something needs to be done better for the RFP process so that we have more people who want to do this. I'm not sure what the answer is, but this is not acceptable to me, nor should it be acceptable to our community. 
Legislator Hines and Legislator Totel. Yeah, just one follow-up. I just want to make sure everybody knows that the contract uh, that expired with IWS was for the solid waste. This is the recycling with county waste, so it's a separate issue, and we didn't have a contract with them, which I was surprised to find out as well, uh, but I guess because it was a revenue generator as opposed to an expense. And uh, Commissioner Denega did say that this is the result of the tariffs with China, because most of our single stream recycling goes over a ship to China. So that's why the numbers have changed so drastically, because there's not that market now to ship it overseas because of the tariffs. Legislators can tell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, when we received this memo, I called and I had uh, Legislator Cheney and part of my caucus was in the room. I spoke to the DPW chief for Highlands. We recycle roughly about 8 million tons a week from just this one tiny community. And we've already hit them, as everybody else has said, with the, the tipping fees. Now we're hitting them with this. There has to be something more that we can do as the county representatives to give more advance notice. I mean, they take our solid waste to Rockland County because in Rockland County, they're only paying $79 down there for the solid waste. I mean, this is just unacceptable. And I think at, in the future, we need to, as Legislator Menuda said, address the RFP um, proposals and also try and get things in line with the budget process. I mean, we're approving things after the fact or we're approving contracts after all the municipalities have already set their budgets and their tax rates, and we can be hitting them with, with a ton of new tax money that they're not gonna be able to come up with. So I think we need to look at this as a whole in the coming year on getting our contracts and everything else in line with the budget process. Thank you. Okay, I think I have to correct you. I don't think it's eight million tons. It's eight tons. Eight tons. Eight yeah, because budget, the budget's probably not much more than eight million. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, <laughs> over a billion dollar budget, I think. <laughs> but uh, no, I hear everybody's concerns, and I think the question was that the contracts expired. I mean, we had five or four or five year, not with not with the recyclables, but with the the uh, tipping fees at the landfills or at the t uh, transfer stations. Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. You want to say something? Well, the the solid waste. Yeah, you're correct. It was a twenty. Well, it was a five, initially five year contract with three renewable five years periods. Um, and that expired in early November. Um, the contract that they went out for were, was a one-year contract with uh, two additional optional single years at the county's um, sole discretion. Um, there's some question as to whether that would have precluded anyone else from bidding on it because it's a one year it was a one year deal and it costs money to mobilize and, and, and get ready to, to run an operation like that so um, we're definitely going to look into this at physical services um, with uh, Mr. Hammond and Mr. Denega present I hope, hopefully and um, we'll get to the bottom of it and we'll find a, a way forward that uh, is going to put us in a better position than we are now. Good. I mean, with the majority leader and John Bureau, and I think her, we heard yesterday there was allusion that, that or alluded to that one of the bidders was buying one another bidder, so we only got one bidder. So that's one of the reasons. I, you know, we'll hear more at your meeting. Okay. Definitely a concern. I think it's a concern. The villages uh, we're halfway through the year, so it's not hitting us quite as bad. But we're going to have to budget for it for next year. And Barry and I come from villages, but the towns are hit with it right now in the cities as well. It's really it's going to be dramatic. We're not going to have a physical circle. With all due respect, we're not going to have a physical circle. Not for a week from Monday, you know. Yeah. So this is going to impact people in a few days. I mean, and on a 20-year contract, you would think you would put provisions in there to renew it. This didn't happen overnight. It wasn't like, I mean, you had to renew it. I get that. Yeah, the 20 years. This was Hudson Baylor, right, with their site? MSW, which somebody totally dropped the ball with that. The contract that we had with the recycling, which was a handshake agreement, which should never happen in government, was uh, was a whole other story. So whoever's writing these contracts need to be, we need to find someone else who knew to write these contracts. And RFP, I mean, if there's nobody else bidding on them, I'm all in favor for RFP, but we can't control who bids on the contract. Yeah, the RFP. Oh, is that what, okay. But if we can get some haulers to haul out to Beacon, would be an, an, an immediate, at least a band-aid for this. 
to expect these communities to hold on to 10 tons of recycling and happen fast, especially in the holiday season. I mean, you're not, you're talking about, I, I know when my, when, in the holidays in my house, I have extra garbage cans just for the holiday season. So now you expect an entire county to hold on to these recyclings or to throw them away. I mean, that's totally irresponsible. I mean, I'm a big recycling guy, you know. I, I think we have to look into the future. I'm all about the Green Committee. I'm all about recycling, but you know, now we're, our hands are tied. What are we gonna do, throw them out? Now, we've been training people for decades to recycle, and now we're gonna tell them, hey, forget about all, everything we've been talking about and just throw it away. It's irresponsible. That's all I have to say. I understand. Definitely. Okay, yes, Legislator Benelli, then. Barry, did you have something else? No. Thank you, uh, I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Just, just to speak to Mr. Sierra's concerns so that I understand what you're saying, uh, I would like to make a suggestion that uh, I'm glad to see that Mr. Cheney, uh, as the Chairman of Physical Services, is on top of this, and that has to happen for this year to come and speak. But I think that the other person that needs to come and speak for us is the Cabinet And whether he comes to Physical Services uh, a week from Monday, or he comes to rules on this upcoming Wednesday because that's his oversight committee to give us a um, opportunity to have some questions answered that we have and to give us an update on where he's being with us because I'm sure that he is diligently looking at this after hearing what Legislator Hines had to say. So I would make a suggestion between either Mr. Chain or Mr. Um, Baggio as the chair is to make sure that Hines appears at one of those meetings. Or both. Or both. And we'll have discussions tomorrow anyway. Okay. Motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? We're adjourned.